I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and I wanted to uh, take a second to talk about um, the situation in Baltimore and um, uh, particularly the politics around it uh, in terms of how people are responding uh, on both sides of the spectrum. You've got <clears throat> white and black. You've got uh, those who uh, believe in justice, those who believe in law and order over justice. Not that they don't believe in justice, but they believe that there is a correct systematic way to uh, obtain justice, which should not involve protesting or looting or uh, or burning things down or whatever. Okay. Um, uh, to get into that a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what I've kind of seen in terms of this conversation. And I'm also talking a little bit about Stephen A. Smith, but I don't want this to be the sole purpose of this discussion, but uh, he is certainly part of it. Um, the the One of the interesting things about this whole conversation in terms of what's happening since Freddie Gray was killed by the police, since the thugs on the Baltimore Police Department decided to sever his spine uh, before the hoodlums in the Baltimore Police Department have brutalized and killed many, many citizens in the black community of Baltimore as well as other areas. Um, since the hooliganism of the Baltimore Police Department led to situations where people felt that they had to respond with uh, less violence than the original hooligans in order to make their point, um, you know, as, as a result of all of this, uh, you've seen a conversation about the after effects. You see the conversation uh, where people tend to really focus heavily on how people are responding to uh, to what happened, to what's been going on uh, in terms of the severe, severe, undeniable, uh, cataclysmic uh, civil rights violations that have occurred in that community. Uh, you have a lot of people that are focusing on um, on the protests, which the majority of the protests are peaceful. Uh, it's mostly people talking about it on social media, people that are marching, um, etc. You have a few people who are being more assertive, maybe even a little violent, maybe attacking police officers, maybe burning things down, maybe looting, whatever. They're a very small minority, but that minority does exist. But even in the context of that small minority, uh, the amount of violence that they're exerting on the, either the community or on the uh, Baltimore Police Department is not even a, a, a minute fraction of the amount of consistent brutalization that they that has been inflicted upon people, particularly people of color, in this city, uh, a lot of this links to the war on drugs. The war on drugs, which was a false war, is a war on black people. Uh, go look up uh, the information about this, about the Iran Contra affair, uh, the situation. The movie Kill the Messenger does a good job of covering this. There's another movie called Freeway Crack in the System, where they talk about how the government allowed drugs into communities like Baltimore and Los Angeles, etc. Um, and they what, what they wanted to do was create the illusion they were fighting a war on drugs, so they were allowing the kingpins to supply tons and tons of crack cocaine into black communities to really rattle the community and throw them off and in order to make it appear that they were fighting the war on drugs they said look we're going to just lock up a whole bunch of niggas that's what they did and, and that because niggas are disposable in their mind i deliberately use the term nigger because in the minds of the state that's pretty much what we are not to everybody but if you look at the way the criminal justice system is administered um you, you they give better justice to dogs than they give to black men uh, if you kill a dog, you're going to get in some serious trouble. You kill a black man, you might get away with it, especially if you got a little bit of money, because after all, he's just a black man. His life doesn't have much value anyway. If you're a cop and you kill a black man, uh, you probably no, won't get reported. Uh, you might even get a Medal of Valor. You're certainly not going to get indicted because cops don't get indicted when they murder black people. So with that being said, you have a situation where uh, the police have consistently come in, brutalized innocent citizens. Mind you, the criminals are not just the people who quote-unquote criminals. I don't even like using that term per se because remember the war on drugs brought in the, the definition of what it means to be a criminal. So it was Freddie Gray, for example, had a lot of drug distribution, drug possession uh, uh, charges on his record. But, um, you know, if they were to go to college campuses and impose those same that same police terror, that police uh, harassment onto college students, you see a lot of co white college kids going to going to prison too because they use lots and lots of drugs and they drink like fish. They drink like nothing I've ever seen, um, and so they're they're into all kinds of stuff that. Uh, could lead to criminal behavior, uh, things that should concern all of us if we're interested in an equal dissemination of justice. Now, that takes me to Stephen A. Um, I saw this video today on ESPN. Um, 
that somebody sent me. I wish I could remember the brother's name. I, I can't look it up because I don't. If I hit a button, it'll throw stuff off of my computer. But I should give him credit for this. Um, he just said, "Hey, Doc, have you seen this?" And I saw it and I watched the video. And this is what Stephen A. says: Our ancestors would be ashamed by the looting. Um, he calls them criminals. He says, um, "You know, this kind of behavior is not acceptable." He says the term "police brutality" um, can incite unnecessary hatred toward the police because you're separated from uh, rogue behavior by certain individuals. And I think that what Stephen A. does not understand is that police brutality, a lot of it is very systematic. A lot of it is a result a result of training in which the well-being of the officer or the officer's objectives are put above uh, simple respect. Uh, for for human life, uh, you know, decency and dignity being shown toward the people that you're there su supposedly to serve and protect. Remember, police pretty much are there to serve and protect rich people and white people. For black people, they're there to control us. That's that's what uh, police do to African American communities. They control those African American communities, protect the rich from the poor, protect the white from the black. So. Whites can certainly say, especially in the middle class, they can say the police are here to serve and protect us. We love them. But if you're black, they're not here to serve and protect you. They look at you with an eye of suspicion. That's why a lot of young men like Freddie Gray run when they see the police because they've been beaten by those same cops on multiple occasions. Uh, those cops will plant drugs on them. They will take their money. They will brutalize them in unimaginable ma ways. And because the system does not hear them, they're, they're, your complaint pretty much goes right into the, the trash can as soon as you make it. Now... <clears throat> Here's the thing about Stephen A. Smith. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to talk bad about this this brother because uh, he was very nice to me when I was on the show a few years ago. I was on the show maybe four, three or four times. But the thing you have to understand is Stephen A. works for white people. Uh, Stephen A. is afraid of white people. Stephen A. probably loves white people very much, and I don't blame him. They give him millions of dollars. But he is, to some extent, what we might call a propped-up Negro. Um, he has a certain degree of power. Uh, be, that's been given to him by whites. Uh, black people didn't give him this power. If if white people got mad at him, he wouldn't have a job anymore. He wouldn't be on TV anymore. He wouldn't be on ESPN anymore. He knows sports very well. He does not know social commentary very well. Um, it, it doesn't mean he doesn't have a right to have his opinion, but he thinks probably a little more highly of himself than he otherwise would because sometimes... Uh, that validation you receive from these powerful white corporations can make you feel like you the man. Like, I'm sticking my chest up because I'm on TV every day and I make $2 million, $3 million, $4 million a year. And that's why I'm better than you, which is why I can tell you niggas to shut the hell up because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Okay, that's uh, by my assessment of Stephen A. What I'll also say about Stephen is that if you notice, if you observe his commentary, he's much harsher on black people than he is on white people. He's afraid of white people. Remember, uh, when he talked about black people, Steve, Steve Harvey did the same thing. Uh, when he talked about black people and there was something he said that upset black people, because black people don't pay his bills, he said, both of them said, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn what the black community thinks, right? But when that one white woman on ESPN, I forgot her name, when she complained about the sexism in some comments Stephen made, it literally broke company policy and went on to Twitter. She should have been fired for this, fired and sued and called out. She broke company policy and went on Twitter and bitched about him, about you know him being a sexist and this and the other. Stephen A. buckled like a little bitch. He went on TV and he cried like a baby practically. He was all apologetic. They suspended him. All this other stuff. And this really comes down to politics. White feminists have a lot more power than black people. So you saw where the laws were being applied differently for different groups of people based on the power, ba the, the power of the individuals who were laying out that complaint. Malcolm X talked about that. He talked about how uh, down, I want to say it was Birmingham. Black people being brutalized like crazy by whites. Black people being killed by whites. Black people being terrorized by whites. And the president, John F. Kennedy, did nothing. He said, well, I'm sorry. You know, I'd like to do more. But I'm, I'm doing my Bill Clinton imitation because I don't know a Kennedy imitation. But he said, I, I'd like to do more, but I, I can't do more because, because the law won't let me do more. Right? He was, he was saying the law has you know, him handcuffed and he couldn't do anything to help the black people down there. But the minute black people started fighting back... The minute black people started to raise up and say, you, we're not going to let you do this to us anymore, suddenly he calls in the National Guard. And Malcolm made a good point. Malcolm said, you didn't have any extra laws available to you when you called the National Guard on us than you did when you told us you couldn't do anything about the people who were victimizing us. So you've got plenty of medication 
to deal with the symptoms of the problem, but you have absolutely nothing that can deal with the original problem itself. So the simple idea here, when you're talking about the re different reactions that people have uh, to the killing, perhaps murder, of Freddie Gray, and the killing of many other individuals by the, at the hands of police. Eric Garner, who sat there and said, I can't breathe, and they didn't even give him CPR. Or the brother in Tulsa, who said, I, I, I'm losing my breath, and the cop said, fuck your breath. Uh, when you're seeing this consistent dehumanization, uh, and you see the plethora of reactions to this, not everybody has the, the patience to hold hands and say, we shall overcome and pray that things are going to get better, or write their local congressman who's going to throw the letter in the trash. We don't all have the patience for that. Some of us respond in kind. You've inflicted violence on me and the people I love, then I will fight you back. I will defend the people that I care about. And e even if I get hurt, it doesn't matter because you know what? I ain't got nothing to lose anyway. You've all, I'm a young black man out in the streets. You've already marginalized me because I got a criminal record. You've kicked me out of your society because you refuse to give me a decent education. I cannot get a job and my life sucks in so many ways that you can't even imagine. I don't even care if I die at this point. So that's the society, that's the underclass you've created. That's the frustration you've created in these communities. You've got these children out in the street whose fathers have been locked up in the prison system. That's why the fathers aren't there. So Fox News, when you're asking where are the fathers, go check the local penitentiary. You put them there. Your policies, your racist policies, put them there. And so when I look at the looting or I look at the rioting, or I look at somebody burning down a CVS and, and people say, well, you're burning down the things that are owned by your own community. We don't own no damn CVS. That is not ours. That's somebody else's CVS. Am I going to complain about that? No, I don't care. I really don't care. It, it's not because I support it. It's not because you would see Dr. Boyce Watkins out burning down CVSs. No, it's because I don't understand the imbalance in the conversation. I don't understand how you could talk about the so-called hooliganism of the looters, but have nothing to say about the hooliganism of those damn cops who murdered this this kid for nothing. Yeah, he, they might have been, had a reason to arrest him. Maybe they, you know, drugs or whatever. Okay, I don't support drugs. I don't support the selling of drugs or the use of drugs. So maybe you had to deal with that. But did you have to kill him? Do you go kill white kids when they're out here after championship games, when they're burning stuff up and flipping over police cars and throwing bottles through windows and all this other? Do you go on TV and call them thugs? No. But you don't use that word thug to describe white kids because you're saving it for black people because the word thug really is code word for nigger. You're saying these niggers, we need to do something about these niggers. Every time somebody says we need to do something about these thugs, I want you to say to yourself, we need to do something about these niggers. That's what they're really saying. We need to put these thugs in prison. We need to put these niggers in prison. We need the police should shoot these thugs in the street. They need to shoot these niggas in the street. The police need to get these thugs back in their homes. And where are the parents of these thugs? Where are the parents of these niggas? These niggas need to be in their house. That's what they're basically saying. Because if you want to really know why I know that this is what they're saying, it's because they don't say it when white people are acting a damn fool. When those white kids after a championship game on college campuses are burning stuff up and flipping over cars, don't I've, I've rarely, if ever, heard anybody talk about them like a pack of thugs or hooligans or anything like that. Now, a uh, simple point here. Here's the thing I want you to walk away with from this conversation. This is where I'm going to leave it because I'm actually, this is almost nap time. But, but somebody sent me that video, Stephen A., and that brother woke me up from my nap. Look, <clears throat> anytime somebody wants to talk about the, the symptoms or the effects of somebody's actions, it's disingenuous to talk about the, the, the effects of the action without talking about the original action. If you have more to say about the looters and the fact that you're mad because somebody stole some property out of a, out of a out of a convenience store, and, and, and but yet you have nothing to say about the fact that this young man lost his life, you're pretty much admitting that you care more about property than you care about the loss of human life. If I go uh, and murder somebody and then their relatives come over and steal my dog and 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 and, and pee in my yard and and bust my windows and take my my bicycle. I'm not going to, I shouldn't be able to get your attention by saying, look at the damage they did to my house. Look at, they peed in my yard. They took my bike. That's horrible. If I, if I can distract you by getting you to focus on the fact that they stole my bike and get you to forget about the fact that I murdered one of them, then you a damn fool. You an idiot. You're stupid. Or you're racist or extremely biased extremely biased i think that's what we're seeing here because yeah my friends would probably do that somebody who is biased in my favor would probably say yeah you're right these hooligans they stole your bike what's wrong with these people they i can't believe that they would come and damage somebody's property like that who behaves that way right 
that's what my friends are going to say if, if they're if they're if they're really trying to really ride for me no matter what. But someone who's fair and balanced, so I don't want to say fair and balanced because Fox News uses that term. They, they just ruined the whole term fair and balanced. Somebody who's trying to be fair, trying to be objective, would say, yes, Dr. Watkins, it is sad that your bike got stolen. It is sad that somebody peed in your yard and busted your window. But before we deal with that, let's deal with the fact that you murdered somebody in their house. And I would say, Dr. Watkins, that that murder, that homicide is far more serious than you losing your bike and getting your window busted. So that's all you got to say when you're talking about this stuff in Baltimore. If you can't, if you're going to talk about the looting, you can't say nothing about this poor brother dying and being killed and losing his life at the age of 25 before his life has really even begun. If you can't say nothing about all the other hundreds of, if not thousands of people that have been brutalized by the police in Baltimore and many cities across the country, then, then, then you're a bigot. You're a racist. And understand a lot of black people are racist against black people. You got a lot of propped up Negroes on TV getting paid big money to say whatever the hell white people tell them to say. If white people suddenly got radical and said no it's wrong what the police did was wrong then guess what Stephen A would be on TV saying no this is wrong what the police did was wrong because they're puppets they're, they're, they're puppets and they answer to a puppet master and, and so you really have very few free black men and free black women on TV you don't have that many and sometimes when they do get free when they do really tell the truth when they really try to take a stand Guess what? Their black ass gets fired. That's what happens. That's why a lot of y'all go on your job every day and you're scared to speak up because your boss is going to kick you in the butt, which is one of the reasons why I promote the idea of black entrepreneurship as one of our keys to economic, social, political, and psychological and spiritual freedom. Learn how to have your own business. Learn how to get your own money. Learn how to have side streams of income. Learn how to build what I call FU money. FU money means that if somebody calls you the N-word or somebody disrespects you on the job, do you have enough money? Do you have enough Enough investments do you have enough wealth do you have enough options to walk in their office and say f you i'm out i quit today i'm gone because i'm not tolerating this kind of disrespect for any amount of money and that's the bottom line that's the bottom line so um so some part of me is annoyed with what Stephen a said part of me laughs about it part of me feels sorry for him uh, but either way, um, it, you know, the, the bigger part of me is focused on the issue, not so much on his personality or what he might have said. So let's stick with the issue. The issue is police are killing kids. All cops ain't bad. We know that. I believe there are a lot of good cops. My father was a cop. I, I really do support good officers doing their job, which is why I believe that good officers need to be first in line to help us weed out the bad officers. Because it is a pro, it, there is a virus in terms of the systematic ways in which police are trained to brutalize and disrespect the community. And we can't stand for this anymore. So if that means somebody got burned down a CVS or whatever, I'm not going to say nothing about it. It's not because I support it, but it's because I got bigger things to think about. And that's all I really want to say about that. Well, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. And by the way, we have a new film. Speaking of owning your own business, building your own wealth, uh, there's a great new film we created called Resurrecting Black Wall Street about the African Americans in 1921 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who built their own wealth, built such a prosperous community that the white folks in the community next door burned it down. And guess what? In the local media, all they talked about was black people being hoodlums and rioting and all that stuff. They see they they've been doing this for hundreds of years. This, this is nothing new, um, and so I hope you'll support this film. We tell this story, but we also talk about resurrecting the ideas of Black Wall Street to talk about how in, all of us can build our own Black Wall Street, how we can build our own wealth, our own economic sufficiency, so we don't have to kowtow and coon and clown in order to get a dollar from people who are trained to hate us or trained to watch our children die. That's the bottom line. That's why we created the film. So I hope you will support it. Please, please, please support. Uh, you can go check out the trailer of the film at resurrectingblackwallstreet.com that's resurrectingblackwallstreet.com resurrecting spelled with one s r e s u r r e c t i n g something like that i think that's right anyway uh that's all i gotta say i'm dr boyce Watkins from your black world please take care god bless i am gone peace